everyone, Waterbot here, and welcome to Spire of Sorcery demo version. I, okay, full disclosure, I don't actually know what this one is. This one purely was, I saw one of my other friends was interested in it, and I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna download it. And then somebody else today in chat said, this one was good, so we're gonna just dive right in. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do resources and loot twice as much, keep everything else normal. And let's do the tutorial. Four tutorial chapters at the start of the campaign. Sure, I might cut them out. It was a regular day in the Empire, just like any other. The peasants plowed muddy fields, the soldiers marched along dusty roads, and the Inquisitors relieved boredom by beating yet another group of young mages who failed to embrace the reality of imprisonment at the Sanctuary of the Corrupted. Then, unexpectedly, some of the mages felt something that they had only... They have only whispered about the call of the spire. Was it a bait of the Inquisition, or the summoning came from a real spire, one of the living, self-aware fortresses of the mages of the past? Three mages bet their lives on the ladder and escaped the sanctuary of the corrupted to follow the call, going east into the wild lands. To draft a character into the initial party, select their portrait with the left mouse button and then confirm the selection. All right, so we're going to go with uh, Jarvis. Very hard to poison, but he is cautious. He's also an indiscriminating hoarder. <laughs> sure. We've got Rosanna, who's a resilient amnesiac, suffers from cold weather. We have Alaren, the strong man with weak stomach. He's afraid of the dead, and he wants to be loved. I like that. Uh, let's see. Okay, we got one more, so I should probably actually look at everybody else. So, Omesa, resilient, has a weak stomach, wants to visit the pleasure house of the non-humans and experience the forbidden pleasures. Oh boy, she wants some dwarf gigolos or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hinos, wants to torture a mutant to death, cast a spell deserving an archmage, to restore peace between humans and non-humans, to visit another pleasure house, visit the distorted lands, or tear the wings off of a sting tail and see what's inside. Boy, some of these people are just... Uh, let's see. This one? Cast a spell deserving of, of an Archmage. The only problem is we specifically have... Uh, we already have somebody that is very hard to poison and also a coward. I was thinking specifically Kyoto, who wants to restore peace between humans and non-humans and run, is a puker, isn't very good at cooking. Really, she just has trouble with food in general. Um, but she does have an excellent memory. So let's go with these three people. These people have some very specific wants. I know, it's weird? Uh, so what do I do? Okay, food for the journey not yet completed. Click on the icon to read the description in the chapter. After escaping the sanctuary, the mages have a chance to collect resources and cook food for the journey. Yes. New quest available, beggars can't be choosers. Moving around the map. In travel mode, the map is made of hexes. To move around the map, use the left mouse button. Zoom in and out, use the mouse wheel. To look around... Okay, move the map with arrows on the keyboard. To collect resources on the map, move the party to the same hex. Okay, so we have to get one locust bud and one gnawed carcass. Gross. Okay, to access the party's inventory, click on the button in the left corner of the screen. Ah, uh, Aziz. Alright, so we have some gnawed, gnawed carcasses. But what about locust buds? Oh, down there. Party starts each day with three movement points. Moving one, ca one hex costs one move point. The dots next to the party indicate how many you have. To end the day, click end current day in the bottom right corner or press space. Boop. Okay, this seems kind of neat. With the requirements being have, uh, having been met, the following quest can be completed. Beggars can't be choosers. Complete. The secrets in the sauce. To access the party's cooking pots. Okay. So we must we must cook. Cooking starts with a selection of a recipe from the list on the left side of the cooking screen. Alright, we might as well go with this one. To confirm the selected recipe and cook the desired food, press the button in the middle of the screen. 
With the requirements having been met, the following quest can be completed. Secrets in the sauce. Okay. So cooked them together. Gets us grilled ribs with spiky, uh, spiky, spicy maggot sauce in its inventory. I'm feeling queasy. A feast for three. To access the slot for consuming food and review the party's current sustenance reserve, open the party profile by clicking the button on that screen. Okay. So we just have to feed them. I uh, this one? This one. To make the party consume food, drag and drop the desired item with the mouse to the relevant slot. Okay, consume. With the requirements having been met, the following quest can be completed feast for three. This tutorial is kind of heavy-handed in a weird way. When the last main quest has been completed, finish the chapter moving there. Cool. Okay, do I have to... Okay, I can do WASD to move around. I could turn this game down too much. Last couple of games have been kind of loud. This game, on the other hand, seems actually like a reasonable volume. And current chapter, yes. I think I I think I got the extra locust bits. All right, supplies from the spire not yet completed. All right, start this. Something for nothing. See what's inside a specific hex. Click on it with the right mouse button. To initiate the encounter with a passive object, move the party to the same hex. A window will appear asking you to confirm engagement with the object. Cool. So we have forest, but we also have treasure chest. Occasionally, the spire dispatches to the party essential su supplies. These are protected by a harmless spell that's easily disarmed. Initiate the encounter. Yes. Spellcasting begins with selecting the spell from the party's spellbook. Open the spellbook, click on its icon in the lower left corner of the character's spellcasting area. Okay. Once the spellbook is open, choose the specific spell you want to start assembling. The spells that require more memory than your selected party member has will be shown as unavailable. What? Okay. What spell am I picking? What am I doing? It just told me to pick a spell, yeah? I... No, that's the Encounter Chronicle. These are elements. These are not what I was going for. What? A... What is my objective on this? I must have missed which spell I'm supposed to cast. Uh Oh, supplies from the spire. Information. I I see. So we have three interactions, none of them are yet done. Let's pull this back up again. Dispel. What does unchaining do? I don't know. We're going to try this. To assemble a spell, place the required elements on this formula. Several characters can contribute elements to the same formula. To move elements from the character's hand to the spell formula, first click... <laughs> oh boy. Click on the element, click the formula. You can assemble multiple spells simultaneously, one per each character present in the encounter. When a character does not have any elements that you want to use right now, you can refresh their hand by clicking the discard button next to their hand. Okay. So in retrospect, I can't make this spell anyway. I don't have the required thingamadoos. Well, close it to this for a hot second. We can light it on fire? We can light it on fire, so let's work on that. I mean, otherwise we could try and discard. Let's just try and discard for the time being. Okay. What about you? Hey, there we go. Okay. So I can actually... I can do the dispel after all. Wait, what? I'm doing this wrong, I think. 
Are these mechanics overly complex for no reason? I, I think they'll get simple once I understand them. It's mainly just I don't... I've never seen this before. Okay. First click on the element, then click on the formula. But why are these locked? What if... What if I had her do it? Okay, maybe I can only pull from the... Oh. Said character out of concentration. Oh, because... Because I discarded, that's why. Moving one element from a character's hand to the spell formula is considered one action. Discarding the character's hand counts as an action. By default, every party member can only per perform one action per, per round for free. Extra actions are possible within the same round after a concentration effort that adds tokens of fatigue to the character. Press the button left of the character's hand to undertake concentration. Okay. When all party members have exhausted their actions, you no longer wish to purchase more actions through additional concentration. You can end the current round by clicking OK. Players will end, the environment, and the opponents will begin. I got it. I understand. Uh, how do I... Is this end player's turn? It's a treasure chest, so I don't think it's actually... I'm gonna clear that. It's a treasure chest, so I doubt it's actually coming after me here. Once the spell formula is completed, it lights up and becomes ready to cast. Click on the button in the bottom of the spell to cast it. Okay, new discovery. What did we discover? Uh, blood plaster, foul drops, and a refreshing brew. With the requirements having been met, the following quest can be completed. Something for nothing. Cool. Alright, I'm starting to understand this. I... Oh, that's the map. We don't care about that. It's a little weird, but I understand why it is the way it is. And I respect it. And I understand why they had so much of a... Like, so heavy-handed of a tutorial. Because I think if I went into this blind, I would have been kind of lost. With the issue of food resolved, it's time for the mages to concoct their first alchemic substance, as well as discover the benefits of looting corpses. Start the chapter. Okay. New quest is now available. Versatility of al alchemic resources. Okay, so we have to get a Bloodforth and a Stormium. Okay, so we just have to encounter Dead Man, who is down there. Okay, restores eyes. Head over there. Grab this. Okay. Perhaps it was a scavenger looking to plunder a tre plunder treasure or a merchant on the way to trade with non-humans. Who can tell? Now it's just another withered corpse. Alright, so what can we do with this guy? Burn him, bleed him, and light him. And we also have new discovery. Uh, whatever that was. I'm assuming we got kind of sick there. So... I see a lot of fire. Well, in that case... Is there a seven, or does that just mean she has more resources than others? In that case... Let's go to... Combinations? Not a restoration. What's the... What is this? Oh, that's infection. Damage and fire. 
Okay, so I don't think I can do anything with infection. Let's, uh... Let's do Ball of Fire, because we can start with that. Okay. And then what else do we have? Just under damage. Anything that specifically... ...works with this. Skyhammer, Anvil, no. Let's just, uh... Oh, I can't sort based on what spell formula I have available. I could look into maybe a touch of ice, but I don't think that's going to do anything to it. Let's start doing restorative breath. Because that way I can at the very least move that over. Okay, and then I have to wait. So I'm pretty sure we're going to get another infection round. Yeah, contagious environment. That's what's going on. Luckily, my characters are fairly resilient, question mark. Okay, so I'm going to prep that. Prep that. And we're going to cast Ball of Fire. Okay. And let's keep... Keep prepping the fire. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to do. So I think I'm going to just hang on to the restorative breath. Just in case. Okay. No one's quite there yet. Let's have him... Okay, base cost of the first action in every run is free. Okay. Current mood value. I just wish I knew where fatigue was fully listed. Now, well, no dice on that one. We'll just load up the fire. I wonder if I could actually upgrade to a uh, Flaming Hands instead of picking that spell. Maybe. Okay, let's try... Let's try Restorative Breath on her. Didn't do anything. I, I think? Restoration. Information. Ah! Every three removes one wound. Let's see. Books and scrolls. Tokens. Disease. Okay. Um. When a character's resilience stat is filled with infection tokens, they convert to a new disease and is then reset. Diseases. Well, it doesn't look like I've got any restorative abilities that get rid of it. I might be able to do a spell combo between Unchaining and Healing Touch? Okay. Give him a fatigue. Okay, and then I've got one more Flaming Hands. This is... Kind of slow. I'm not going to lie. There you go. There's some extra fire. We'll get it on the next round. Oh, it's burning. Oh. But it diseased itself. Okay. I... More fire. Okay. 
Okay. We've destroyed it. It got toasted. <laughs> so we got an amulet of reflection. The start of an encounter gives three reflection to its owner and restores skin color. Ashes of the dead, ashen skin. What does that do? I don't know. Okay, with the requirements having been met, the following quest can be completed. All right. So we've looted the corpse. Okay, there are different reasons for why people venture into the wildlands. Some seek treasure among the ruins, others run away from their debts, and others look for the runaways who were last seen in the region. Regardless of their motivation, most of those who cross the big river to enter the wildlands never come back. A few settle on their new lives, but most end their adventures as withered corpses. In the Empire, finding a corpse is a bad omen. In the wildlands, finding a corpse is a sign of good luck. Or contains useful loot and doesn't fight back when challenged. Most of the time. Yeah, so I should have gone with wounds. I I only partly understand what I'm doing. But I'm getting there, and I'm actually having a good time with that. Phantom Moon. The season is this this season is the season of those who belong to the realm of chaos, is followed followed by the season of the broken moon. Alright. I guess I might as well head for some of these alchemical reagents, even though I have, like, no functional clue if they're actually useful. What does morale even do? Ah, spell boost. Spell cast by this character, maximum level 2, deals twice the amount of default tokens. Works once per encounter. Oh... Spine on the coals. And baked bud clusters with bitter ant sauce. Interdasting. Okay, we're getting pretty hungry. Current sustenance level, sufficient level. Okay. Oh, they did not like that. Why did they not like that? I guess they like a balanced breakfast. Oh! Minus two. Okay, so you have to... You really have to go for the mix, otherwise your people are not happy with you. I'm not big on the eating noises. That is... Oh. Not great. Okay, so we gotta we gotta work on their morale. Oh, oh, those aren't mushrooms, those are clouds. Look, they look like mushrooms to me. Okay. Get up to these. Looks like there's a lot of resources for me to kind of grab out and about. I thought I was here to do alchemy. we have what can I do I don't know I'm gonna just start making stuff refreshing brew uh, what is this or masters folly eye patch and burning ground three. Oh, it's a use item Okay, the scavenger's best friend. I... Okay, season the... This season is... Uh, is the season of those who belong to the realm of death. It's followed by the season of the maiden moon. Alright, let's grab that. We're on a journey. This... This seems really interesting. It seems like the kind of game that's really going to appeal to people that want to have that, like, really authentic, hardcore d and experience? You know, the idea of, like, really slogging along with uh, minimal minimal support? Mages encounter the first chest to be cracked open and the first components to be destroyed. Okay. So. Please, please go away. I don't care about slugs. 
The wildlands would not be nearly as dangerous as they are if not for their inhabitants. Different creatures belong to different realms, life, death, and chaos. Some are rather harmless on their own, but become deadly when combined with others. As the party continues to make its way to the spire, it's time for the mages to face their first opponents. Okay, so we've got a critter there, and we've got a treasure chest. I'm gonna go with the treasure chest first. Maybe. Okay, new discovery is this. What is that? I have no idea. So this is this chest can be damaged, burnt, frosted, or is that bled? Acid. Okay, what do we have available? So I could do drop of erosion. I could definitely do explosive arrow. Otherwise, we could try and save up for Splash of Erosion. What about damage? The thing is, we don't have any of the cards... Yeah, we don't have any of the bits required for any of these damage moves. So, Acid is doable. Fire, not so much so. Frost also needs Triangle. So, it seems like Acid is at least... We can start the process with acid. I'm going to try and go for a full-on splash of erosion. Oh. Actually, we have, a, we have enough. With the extra fatigue points... Got it. Alright, that worked out. Okay, so we got Traveler's Rations, a Refreshing Brew, an Ural's Pleasure, Mutant's Spit, and Commander's Brew. Gross. Anyway, Finders Keepers. We can now leave. However, I would be remiss to leave in this situation when there is a critter so clearly deserving of my... Uh... Dangage. New discovery. Pre predisposition to contagion. Okay, then. Okay, so this guy could be burnt. Seems like it's most vulnerable to either wounds or whatever that other element is. Fear. We could We could try and scare it away. Or straight up shatter its will. Sky Anvil, we're close to being able to cast Sky Anvil. Or even Sky Hammer, because here's the thing. Spell boost 3. Spell cast by this character, minimum level 3. Deals twice the number of tokens. Works once per encounter. So I could probably do Sky... Nope. I can probably do Sky Hammer. I just have to pick the right person. There we go. So if we hit this thing, it should take effect twice and kills it immediately. All right. I'm I'm growing to dig this. Unfortunately, Jarvis is the only one that seems to be actually happy about anything. If anything, Jarvis is incredibly ecstatic. The other people are eh, they're okay. Yeah, Jarvis is just constantly happy. What is what is up with Jarvis? Yielding. Doesn't suffer mood penalty when retreating from encounters. Improve mood when witnessing the destruction of an opponent. Mood increases with every single item that the party picks up. Ah! An efficient cook. Produces two items when cooking food. Loves cooking. But is stressed out by it. But also an efficient cook. So if I want to boost her mood, that's the way to do it. So, 
So we should have Elrin do alchemy. He mostly just likes killing things, otherwise is kind of limited. Oh. Daily consumption. At the start of each day, party members spend sustenance points. Different characters spend a different amount. Doesn't look like it can increase or decrease it. So let's not even think about that. All right. Oh, we picked we picked up the slug. Okay. So it does look like we're taking a little bit of damage here. Ah, <sighs> so I think fear. We don't have any fire, but I could hit him with a cleansing. And it looks like, uh, it looks like the endurance, the fatigue penalty goes away pretty quick. So we don't even have to worry about it. Adult giggler. This thing's called a giggler. Well, all right. Now, one thing I will say... is that hitting it with fear made it run away from me. Interesting, we have more resources. Okay. Let me take a look at food. So, you should be our cook. And they really like this. And this will improve her mood. Okay. Choose a recipe. Let's make it again. Okay. Make that. I'm just going to cook a bunch. Okay. So she's happier. Ah, uh, she just gets really fatigued for doing so. That's fine. Let's let's go back and see if I can actually fight the giggler. Now that we know, you know, fear obviously just makes the the thing run away. I'm here to kill. Let's see, I almost wish you started with less spells, but could unlock more as if building a spell deck. I agree. The fact that this is uh, a relatively limited set here is a bit unfortunate. Okay. So, oh, you can even see what's going to happen with it. Uh, so fear will make it run away, but fire or pain will kill it and give me loot. Unfortunately, I don't have much of either right now, but I can probably generate a lot of... Well, let's see what else we have. Restoration. We could do a restoration. Restorative breath. Easily would clear a wound. Healing touch. Uh, not on him, though. No, this guy specifically needs to do sky... Anvil, because I think this guy needs three damage. Let's have this guy prep the restoration. I think it only restore one. So let's just do that. Maybe I should have looked into... Okay. I do that every oh every three removes one okay so the, just the basics here was not worth it but I think it missed okay all right we also have the small shield 
And there's also combo spells. Shift. Nope. Uh, ugh, gosh. What does anything do? Do brotherly shield. Nope. I want this one. Okay, so that shields everybody a little. No, she's pretty fatigued. He is not. Let's see what we got. Tragedies. Alright. Next turn. It's probably going to attack me? Nope. Disease. We absorbed and dodged it. Okay, so shielding actually works really well. It'll just eat the, uh, eat the effects. So in that case... Do we want to do another butterfly shield? Yeah, let's do it. Or another brotherly shield. Okay, I'm getting into this. It's very slow, and I don't think this is the kind of game that I'm going to go out of my way to record in the future. But I... I'm appreciating what I'm seeing so far. It's... Okay. Preparing for a complex action that requires several turns of preparation. I gotcha. Well, let's see if I can kill it before then. Oh, there we go. Hello. It dead. And they are happier. And we get egg. We get single egg. Alright. Pass turn. Wow, I've been playing this for 37 minutes. It does not feel like that. I've gotten nowhere in a hurry. Oh. They hungry. That's okay. Eat your veg. Be happy. Well, they are getting happier. But yeah, I like the unique battle setup. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure if there's more interesting mechanics. Like character equipment or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Party merges into a wide valley with many opportunities to collect resources and score loot. And get hurt in the process. The mages must reach the magic node in the valley's eastern part to activate it, so that the spire can extract the party to its own domain. Okay, so I think this will be the end of... Uh, this level will be the last, just because. But we've discovered a lot of things. Let's start by looking at some things. So there's an equipment system. Okay, when a character consumes an item whose toxicity exceeds... Ah, their stomach. They get ill. No, she... Yeah, she's still got infection. I was assuming that would dip down eventually, but it doesn't look like it does. What about alchemical solutions? What can we make? Uh... I remember right. This guy. Grumpo here. Likes alchemy. The only immediate problem with this is this does boost his fatigue. Well, let's check out the chest first. Okay, so anything will do. Fire, acid, or... Ah, uh, let's see, dispelling. Check dispel. Unchaining. Alright, maybe not on that. Uh, let's see. So, fire or acid only. 
I guess let's just do fire. Let's see, do we want to just prep a fist of fire? Yeah, I don't need a fireball. There we go. Burn a little bit there, and bam. Burn for me. I wonder if this destroys things inside. Maybe? It doesn't seem to. But maybe there's, there is, like, consequences for doing so. I don't know. Unfortunately, the game is a little, uh... Well, I'd say obtuse, but I don't think obtuse is the right word. It keeps a lot of its information very out in the open, but also very close to the chest. Oh, I see. Every time we rest, we lose, like, one or two fatigue. I didn't understand this game, so I didn't try it. Now that I understand it better, I'm actually getting... I'm getting into it. I don't think this will be the kind of thing that I'll do a series on from the perspective of just, like, holy shit, slow. But... Like, it's actually kind of cool. I think the biggest... I'm not even going to call it a grump. I just wish that the party had, like, nothing in their spell books and you would learn spells over the course of the game. I, I think that's everything that would be required to make this game go from, like, oh, man, that's kind of cool. Oh, gosh. Uh, go from, yeah, that's kind of cool, too. Boy, howdy. This is wild. Anyway, let's go beat on a whatever the hell this is. New discovery, that. Random encounter. Um. Duh, okay. Okay, so we got a sorrowful shadow. Who needs a burn in Nathan, or lighting, or decurse? And then we got a fearful shadow that needs more. Well, let's see what we got. Because here's the thing: many of these have AOE. So an orb of light, which requ which would require. I feel like Orb of Light would be the way to do it. What about fire? I just don't think we have enough. So, I'm going to swing Orb of Light and hope for the best. We do not have the parts for this spell. Uh, so in that case... What about protection? We do have the parts for a good protection spell. So let's start with the protection first. Okay. So now we got a shield. Prep that. Uh, more fatigue for work, boy. And then more fatigue for him. It's fine. There we go. I guess I didn't need the uh, didn't need the protection spell afterwards. Or afterwards, after all. But that's okay. Alright, so we just absolutely blast them into oblivion. And now, we have the Borrow. Which I'm pretty sure needs burning. Fire. Do we just go for big fire? Yeah, we're just gonna go for big fire here. Now, this thing might straight up send units out at me. We will see. No, you're right. I could dispel it. I'm not sure what the, uh, the three exclamation marks are. Which is the one issue. But dispelling... Doing a three-tier disenchantment is probably going to be better for me in the long run. Okay. Well, we got a decent chunk of the parts.
We'll wait until next turn. We also, we still have some shielding, so whatever negative effects they're chucking my way shouldn't be too bad. The smell of death. But that's why we have shields. Oh, that's not it. Disenchant the borrow. Now there is three exclamation marks with this one. So Yep. It summoned another gooner. Here's the thing. Fearful death. Oh. And a rageful shadow. Okay, so flashbang or disenchant. I think a big old flashbang is probably gonna be my best best bet here because I can do pillar of light somewhat reliably let's just burn some fatigue here and hyper blast them Yeah, we're good. At the very least, this will take out the dude on the sides. Oh, no, it didn't take him out. Um, I, okay. Let's do flash again. Uh, we've got almost all the parts. We've still got some shielding, so I think I'm just gonna wait. Oh. It converted that into blindness. I, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's fine, I, I guess. Uh, let's reroll on her. What about him? Yep. There it is. Look at that fatigue go. I just wanted to take out both of the... Well, not both of the guys. Clearly the middle guy needs to be uh, hit all at once. So we might have to bank those. But at least we blind him. Nope, we don't blind him. But that, that actually works in my favor, kind of. Okay, flash again. So, I'm looking at a solid... I mean, frustratingly enough, I've... I'm missing the line rune. Uh, let's just do orb of light anyway. Okay, triangle from here, her, fire from him. Reload. There's the lines. Bit of fatigue. Flashbang the dude right in the face. I, okay, I actually really dig this. It's very slow, and I'm gonna say it's not really even that watchable. So, like, from a YouTubing and streaming perspective, I'm not really sure about this one. But from, like, a gameplay perspective on how this game works, it feels pretty good, actually. Honestly, frankly, I'm just gonna hang out here. We have a lot of these weird tormented soul things coming after me, and I don't like that. How are we... how are we doing fatigue-wise? We could use some... Meat snacks. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, right. I really should look into... a number of these. Let's just make things... Uh, let's see, what else can we make? Oh, the only problem is... It does cost me fatigue. 
making every single one of these. Maybe I shouldn't do that when we're right next to weird horrors. Hi! Oh, you're spooky. Okay, so spread the damage or spread the frost. All right, let's see what we're up against. Um, it's only two damage on each one of these. Oh, dispelling is the only one that gets me loot. You're right. All right. All in, baby. Okay, let's do second to spell. We want two of these. Let's see. I guess the other thing I should probably have done, now that I'm thinking about it, was probably should have done one of these. Yeah. Or even gone for the full, full on benevolent shield. It's a little late now. Well, you know what? We'll just take whatever consequences are thrown my way. Bammo! At least none of these guys are going to do anything this round. I've got one more round, I think. Oh, that only took effect once. Oh, that puts me in a uh, bit of a pickle. Oh, each of these characters. Yeah, why? I'm wondering why that didn't work on him. Oh. No, it did work. They have they have two. Ow. What does acid do? Okay, so it looks like acid, every six acid turns into, is that one disease? I'm not sure whatever that is. During encounters, acid has a chance to propagate by giving one to random. Okay, so I actually have some time before these guys become a problem-ish. But yeah, it looks like acid boosts other damage types. So we kind of want to finish these guys off sooner than later, if I'm lucky enough to do so. Well, that's trash. Okay. We just need one more three line rune. Who has got you do? Do we wait? Do I have a choice? And the other thing I could have done was actually done shielding. I still can do shielding. In fact, looking at... Uh, I don't know what that does. Well, it's okay. Whatever consequences I suffer from, I'm not frankly sure what that did. Looks like the acid is propagating to them, luckily enough. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess the other thing I could have done this entire time, and maybe should have done. Uh, 
Cost him a little bit of fatigue. You know, the sad thing is, we got the room we needed. Instead of pushing more fatigue, though, I'm gonna say I'm probably fine as I am. Let's just wait and use the Frost Rune on the next round. I doubt they're gonna be able to get through two of my shields. They might, actually. Oh, well. Okay, yeah, luckily she dodges. And these guys aren't poisoned up. Yeah, we pulled it out. How does the combat system work? Very strangely, effectively, they're casting spells on me and I'm casting spells on them. It, I... I truly have never run into another game even remotely close to this in core concept. It's very slow. It almost feels like a match three game, except for you don't have the match three in front of you. It's just red. Random. Okay, here's the thing. Spooky ghost creatures? Need to chill. I'm just gonna head for that warp point, which is up here. Hopefully they can't follow me through the mountain. But yeah, there's like tons of things for me to explore here. I just, I'm having immense trouble caring. Because yeah, it would be, it would actually be really cool to explore this entire region. And, you know, see what everything has to offer me. But instead, oh gosh! Okay, so we got Gigglers. The answer is either fire or damage. <sighs> what does the most? So the answer is damage is one hell of an expenditure. Fire equally so. And I don't really have enough for fire. I guess here's the wild part. Let's do protection, maybe? We kind of have enough. I could go for a super souped up benevolent shield. Super souped up benevolent shield. There we go. Okay. So there... That clears out a lot of my tokens. And lets me kind of... Rethink what I'm up to. I'm seeing more fire. Than anything else. It only works once per encounter. So I guess we might as well start stacking fire. On whoever. And start stacking... Probably another protection. I know there's also combo spells that I could do. Reflective armor. But fire. Okay, so water fist. Fist of fire plus touch of ice. Just lets me do damage? It doesn't seem like it's worth it. Okay. And then I guess we wait. It's the enemy turn. I think they're mostly just going to be attacking me a bunch. Well, they really do just hate him, don't they? Okay, there's the swirly bits. Let's, um... Kind of rush it a bit.
Okay. Because, yeah, it looks like they might do a nibble on him. Nope. Looks like they might be spreading the damage a bit. I am certainly glad I put up all those shields, because this would have been uh, really bad otherwise. Okay, looks like we can get the fireball. Only immediate problem is the fireball isn't really striking me as worth it right now. I'm much closer on this whole damage business. Put the fire in? Nah. We go looking for a blue. I guess she... Oh, she has a blue. Alright, let's just do big damage. Take out the center one. And then hurt the other ones. Okay, so that gives me a couple of options. Namely, could do Sky Hammer. Can I, can I change this? I can. Okay. Now, I don't know how to do... I don't know how to do the Water Fist. It says both, so maybe if I just aim both of them simultaneously at the same target, we'll be okay. One way or another, end turn, go from here. Oh, you drag this spell onto the other spell. Like, from here over to this? We're just gonna shields up. I realize she ends up with all the bonus shields for some reason, but that's just so I can hit uh, shield the whole party. I might want to actually make her not the middle person. Okay. But frankly, we're fine. Unless they stick more disease at me. She is the tank. She very, very much is. Okay, let's toss those. Toss those. Thank you. Okay, so we can hit the Giggler. Okay, Giggler is dead. And now let's actually look into Skyhammer, which we, we have the supplies for. Next round. Boy, this would have been a lot harder if I hadn't actually experimented with, experimented with the whole shielding business. But here we are. I also really appreciate that every, uh, each character's separate perks really do have such like a notable effect on how they fight. So this guy just... Gets fatigued slower. This guy uh, gets a double spell effect. Like, they're all great. I don't care about the dodging as much, but you know what? Whatever. Best however out of however many. Boo boy, they're getting, they getting close. We grab Snail. Alright. Prisoner of Anomaly. Bursts of chaotic energy tore through the ground here, throwing aside enormous stone blocks. Above the terror, there's a dark swirling cloud that mesmerizes with its vibrations. The air feels electrified, as if lightning could strike at any minute now. Initiate the encounter? Yes. What are we up against? The gaping maw must dispel. Oh, actually, that's not so bad. So, frost. Ah... Okay, so we got to do a big dispel. I think I might want to go for broke on disenchantment. Oh, but not on him. Why would I put it on him? Uh, let's just do protection.
We'll have her work on the dispel. Alright, let's take a look. So this guy's got the, the swirly bits. These guys don't. Now they do. Because, yeah, if we can just immediately dispel it, it's worth the bonus fatigue. Uh, let's see. There it is. Hello, portal. This is probably going to summon a boss. Oh, it's going to do us something. The party has prevailed. Okay. We did it? Hi. What did that do? Oh, no. Where's where's my quest log? What am I doing now? What have I done? And I am sent to the map on party, party profile. Maybe it's under help. Uh Well. Oh, I I do have a new party member. I have Dolette. I guess that's what it was. I guess it's what I get for not reading. I just... Look. I've been doing this for far too long. And while I would absolutely love to, like, reach whatever the end of this demo is, I think I'm just going to chuck myself at these four dudahoods and we'll just see what happens. Does it just make me fight four of them? No! It makes me fight Satan Head. Hello, Satan Head. I mean, luckily the dude seems to be, uh... Just as vulnerable to everything else, but he's probably got new abilities. Oh, Flaming Spitter versus Acidic Spitter. Okay, well, one way or another, the fourth party member is not actually... Oh, opponents waiting to join the encounter. Only three members of the opposing, par opposing party may engage with the party at the same time, or two if one, spots... if one of the spots is already taken up by an object. Got it. Okay, so I don't actually have four party members. I've got three party members, and... A sluggard that's just following me around. Anywho, this game is real weird. I recommend it for anybody that really likes what they see here, but it's one of those that it has one heck of a learning curve what, uh, just to get over the, like, the initial, like, what am I doing? And then once you get past that point, then it's like, oh yeah, this is actually kind of neat. But I don't think I will ever stream any more of this just because it's kind of slow, but I love everything about it. It's an incredibly interesting take on RPG mechanics, and I want to see more like this. I just don't want to try streaming it because I... It's not really... It's slow. Is what it is. So, anyway, with all of that said, uh, if you guys on YouTube like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad and interesting indie games, hit subscribe because I've got so many of them. But for now, let's move on to the next game.